everyone. Welcome back to Unicorn Desk Designs. If you are new, hello, my name is Sammy and today is Try It Tuesday. So let's go ahead and hop into this video. All right, you guys, <laughs> I told you I was going to send my husband out and then I came out and this is how I found it with the top off and uh, it's brutal in here, but we are going to salt wash this. So I am still going to sand the wood filler down because remember there was the shelf that we took out so and it was actually in here good job babe there's definitely still a hole but again like i said we're going to be using salt wash so this isn't a huge factor for me um and then i'm just going to do like a scuff sanding on the outside i don't even may, i might not i don't think i need to and I haven't decided if I want to paint the top or stain the top. In Krishanda's video, she stains it and I really like the look of it, so I might do that. All right, let's get to sand. We are gonna grab a sander. I am using 220 grit sandpaper and I'm gonna smooth all of that wood filler out. Now, you guys use protective eyewear. I at least covered my mouth and everything. My sander kept falling apart and dust got everywhere. I did decide not to scuff sand the remainder of this nightstand side table because I just didn't think it was necessary with the salt wash and the DIY paints. I did decide to sand the top piece. Now I had to go in with a really rough grit. So I went with 80 grit. And then as I started going, um, getting my layers off, you can see there was paint, there was stain, and then there was the raw layer of wood. Now, when you guys are using um, sandpaper, the lower the grit of sandpaper, the more rough it's gonna be. And the higher number in sandpaper, the smoother the sandpaper will be. So I am starting off with an 80 grit. And once I get everything off, we will smooth it out with a 220 grit. So just to show you, this was after I finally got all that paint, whatever paint brand that was, it, it was awesome because it did not want to come off. And then I started my journey on taking off the stain. This is what it looks like when we got it all the way down. Now I'm just cleaning it. This is just a vinegar window cleaner. After I'm done cleaning that, then I will get a damp uh, washcloth uh, just with water and then make sure everything is off, including that cleaning solution. Now comes the fun part and that is mixing our paint. So we are gonna start off with Marquee and we are going to be adding salt wash to all the colors that we use today. Now I was really like, trying to follow her video to a T. However, in this specific video, she is using uh, different products than me. So she had said to start it off with a brownie like texture, which I did, but I should have trusted myself because I know my products and it didn't end up being enough texture. So you are just going to grab a basic chip brush you guys just like you know my usual chip brushes i use and she is she goes in like different strokes areas she stipples she um, does brush strokes and this is to get all different levels of texture however i will personally say after doing this i liked the look more of the stippling the stippling created peaks and ridges and obviously those brush strokes, when I sanded the piece down, it brought out all those brush strokes. So you kind of just gotta try it out and figure out your style. We are doing, you guys, I know it looks crazy right now, all of these like <laughs> cow patches, but it will make sense. And you obviously are gonna see the inside of this since we took the shelving out, so we have to paint you Everything. guys, trusting the process is pretty scary because right now I'm like, there's no way mine is going to look like hers. Guys, this is <laughs> how it looks so far. Beautiful, right? 
Um, I think it's tricky, not tricky. Well, first, trusting the process is tricky because I feel like there's no way this is going to look anything like hers. Um, and then, too, remembering the little, like, spots that you don't see, like, up in here and then, like, the grooves, like, right here. Um, you know, like the underside and stuff. And then like the little like cracks, um, that the paint get into. Um, so, and I really like feeling this. I don't think that I put enough salt wash in it because I'm not feeling much texture, even though I'm stippling it on. Like it just feels kind of flat. So I'm like, crap. So this right here, this is the thickness I wanted with my salt wash. I had to go back over and salt wash those red um, patches because they just dried down like too flat. There was no way that texture was going to come out. So I'm going to go back over all my red and do it again. Hey, you guys, checking back in. So I know that doing the piece of furniture is a little different for my channel, but I have really been wanting to learn how to flip furniture, furniture, um, how to blend colors, how to work with like my salt wash and things like that. And when I found Krishanda's um, YouTube channel, I was so inspired and she is such a great teacher. Like seriously, if you are just getting into any furniture, there's just a piece around your house, Go look at her channel and flip through her videos. A lot of her stuff is on her thumbnails. Um, and she literally takes it step by step, like if you have never touched paint before. So she's really easy to follow. And I had this nightstand that I got from um, a lady that was moving. And I was like, what am I going to do with this? And I go, you know what? This is going to be the perfect piece to just play around with and have fun and be free with it and if it doesn't work out it's a small piece no big deal right so i hope this is inspiring you maybe some of you guys have pieces that have been sitting in your garage or your basement or whatever and now you're like okay uh, i'm gonna do this so i hope you guys feel inspired you all know the drill if you're digging me digging the video then make sure to like and subscribe make sure to visit Krishanda's link which is down in the description box for you as well um, show her some love and let's go ahead and get back into the rest of this video now we're going to mix our second color so you guys give me a break i'm, I'm not used to uh filming furniture flips so i have some work to do with my editing but what I did was I, with the marquee and salt wash still in the cup, I mixed Queen Bee and Liquid Sunshine. Uh, the Queen Bee by itself was too dark of a, like it turns out to be a peachy color. It was too dark. So I added the Liquid Sunshine to brighten it up. And then it gave us this beautiful peach color. Um, so usually you would only need two colors and it'll essentially make three. Are you all picking up what I'm putting down? So right here is where, I don't know why, but I felt like it was coming together. I am going to fill in all of that dead space. Everything that is left bare, I am going to stipple on that peachy color that we created and this time i added the right amount of salt wash so my texture was completely on point now krishanda she like painted an entire buffet and i'm over here painting this and i'm like oh my gosh this is so much painting and so much work but it was so much fun and this just gives you like a bigger idea of what we were doing Here's what we have so far. I know it looks scary, but it is coming together. I used a lot more salt wash with the blend of the Queen Bee and the Liquid Sunshine. I had to mix it up about three times because I wasn't pouring enough paint in there and especially mixed with the salt wash. Um, it you know, it like sucks up that paint. So the inside of this 
was painted that bright teal color and I don't mind it poking out because we we're gonna go over all of this with a teal color in the end. So we are going to go over with the final color and then we're gonna let this completely dry overnight. Going in with our third color, now we're just gonna add those yellows. So you guys, keep in mind, I'm using the same cup, the same brush, and I am mixing all these colors into the same container. So if, I mean, you do you, like Krishanda, she just used one yellow. I just did not like either one of the yellows by themselves, so I used two of them. I'm gonna add some more salt wash into that mixture and it's going to create a custom yellow color. Now, we are just going to stipple that wherever we want. And you guys, use whatever colors you want. I was vibing her video and I had a vision for it. So I went with her color scheme, you do you though. So the little um, insert that I'm gonna put into this nightstand is yellow. So I wanted to make sure that I added a good amount of this yellow color to my nightstand so that when I sanded it down, it I was ensured that I was going to get that yellow popping out at me. Here is what we look like all dried down. So you can see the DIY colors, they're clay based, they dry down lighter than they appear. Um, remember this is marquee. This is a mix right here. So this I mixed with the Marquee, the Queen Bee, and Liquid Sunshine to get this. Because with the Queen Bee, it was too dark. With the Liquid Sunshine, I thought it was too bright. And then this is a mixture of Queen Bee and Liquid Sunshine as well. So I love it. Let's go on to the next step, which is our turquoise colors. Now... Right here, I, she uses two different ones together. So I think these two are the closest and I think I'm gonna pour a little bit of mermaid tail in with sea glass because I think it's just way too light for this color. I don't know. And then I feel like that's way too different. Well, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Now we ain't done. We are not done. So we are taking mermaid tail, which is the darker of the two colors we're going to use here. And I am going to brush that on. Um, I am not trying to get the most clean uh, coverage here. I'm okay with, you know, the colors poking out because in the end, they're going to come out anyways. So I am basically going up, I think like half, way on this nightstand. Again, you guys, I apologize for the framework here. And I am going to bring that around and I just kind of like try and mark it off so I can keep the same height everywhere. <laughs> and we are obviously going to do the inside. This was probably the easiest part of the entire piece right here. And then I go on the inside. And this, I, th this part was a little, oh, look at my boy. Everett came down and he helped for like a second. And he was like, mom, I'm going outside. It was like 70 degrees this weekend, you guys. It was absolutely gorgeous. And then we have another little visitor that came downstairs with daddy. And she was, oh my gosh, you guys. She was handing me a bunch of stuff, but then she actually went to my desk grabbed her own paintbrush, dipped it in the paint, and then started painting. It was the cutest darn thing. The luxuries of, you know, doing some work from home. I love it. All right. This is where it got hard for me. So this is sea glass. I did mix a little bit of the mermaid tail with sea glass to darken it up. Now, in Krishanda's video, she, um, I'm pretty sure I'm saying her name wrong. When she is blending the two colors together, she says that she kind of just uses different brush strokes. She uses circular motions, which I'm doing here, so that there's not a hard, abrupt line going on. So I did my best to recreate that. I tried blending, I tried 
feathering the two together. And I'm not sure if um, it was because the color was so much lighter, but either way, you should be able to blend your colors. So no excuses here. It is just the learning process and I definitely did not do the blending of the two colors justice. However, I kept moving along. So now that that step was done, I go back over the two colors, like where the two colors meet with mermaid tail. And again, using circular motions, different you know directions of the brush strokes. But as this dries down, I'm noticing that there is still a harsh line, at least to me, like I can definitely see where the two are meeting. <laughs> this video just keeps getting better and better with my screenshots here. So I then take my water bottle and I take the mermaid tail again and I go back over trying my best to get the lighter color and darker color to blend together but it doesn't My friends, work. here we are. This is how it looks after. I'm not really happy with the connection of the two colors. Um, I, I tried, I mean, you guys saw the video, um, blending it, but I don't know where I went wrong. These, which you can't see that clearly, like the front looks flawless. Like you cannot see the disconnect, but you can totally see like right here. But you know what? if my uh, phone wants to focus, we're gonna keep trucking because I'm sure Krishana uh, did not get it right her first time either. So we are gonna keep going. We now are gonna go and sand. <laughs> so wish me luck. I was able to get all of the paint off of this top piece, which we are going to stain. So whew, let's cross our fingers and let's get sanded. I went in with a different sander this time so we could get in all those corners and tight spaces. I'm using 220 grit sandpaper and you guys, mm, is that not yummy? Look at all of the beautiful color coming back out. I'm pretty sure y'all were like, why did she cover all of that work up that she did? But this is why. It's like a southwestern sunset coming to life right before our eyes absolutely love it and this is where sorry my phone keeps on going out of focus but it's trust the process this might not be everybody's vibe you know but use your own color scheme here but i love it you guys know i am a color girl and this is awesome i'm going to switch to the orbital sander for the rounded details because i have a sponge kind of attachment to it which makes it a bit easier to get into those curves. After I'm done, I get a microfiber cloth and try to get all of that dust off. And then we're gonna take it back inside. And you guys, everything I did with this nightstand, I did one side before recording the other side because I didn't know what was gonna happen. So we are gonna go in with a transfer and I am measuring the side I already did to ensure that I get it right on the other side as well. I don't want one a little higher than the other. So even when creating this, my husband was like, are those transfers gonna stick to that texture? And I honestly don't, I didn't know because I can say I've never used a transfer over salt wash. So I was crossing my fingers. So I started, I measured out, I placed it. This is the Desperado transfer, you guys. It is retired. I do have two more. I might be friendly and post them, but I'm kind of selfish at the same time. I don't know, check the website and see if I posted it. <laughs> okay, so as with all the transfers, they have a little tack to them, but I did put some painter's tape down below, as you can see. And just to hold it in place in case it kind of like flipped up or anything, I didn't want my transfer moving. Now, I will say, putting this over texture, you need to use a little bit more elbow grease because you're pushing it down into the texture. Sorry, that's my alarm to pick up my kids. Um, but you can see that a lot of the little pieces are staying on the backing, but I wanted that. I wanted it to look de-stressed. 
So I purposely missed, you know, little sections of the transfer. And I'm obviously I did it to the other side. Once I am done, I'm going to get the backing and I'm going to burnish my transfer. This means I'm just rubbing it in to my piece of furniture, making sure it is on there nice and good. I'm going to take another transfer from Desperado and I'm going to put it on the back. Now this one, you guys, this took me some time. Let me tell you all of those words and then like getting inside with that little overhang. <laughs> right there. Um, this was not for the week. That is for sure. It took me a bit, but it was so, so worth it. I burnished that as well. And then I did take a sanding block and lightly go over the side ones to finish the bottom of this piece. We're taking clear DIY wax, have no idea where this wax brush came from you guys. And I am going to wax this nightstand. Now, it looks sketchy right now, but it dries down um, lighter and it dries down matte, which is what I wanted. I wanted no kind of satin finish or anything on here. And oh, you guys look at those colors. They're so gorgeous. So you can see how much darker the wax makes it look, but it does dry back down. We are going to now finish the top. So first I took some water. I took dark and decrepit liquid patina, which you could use as a stain, and I brushed that on. I used the water, it just helps like move the liquid patina. And then I wiped it back with a paper towel. And I was like, this is too light. Um, again, I was trying to match Krishanda's like to a T, but she also did not use a black transfer. She used white um, over a silk screen. So it just wasn't, working for me. So then I grabbed ebony. I tried that and still it was just a dark brown. So off camera, I decided to take my true black min wax stain and I went over it. It still has a really deep brown undertone, but I think that it needed that really dark top um, because of the black transfers I decided to put on it. So to each their own, right? I mean, it's all your style. So you can see way darker. Um, I decided to use water-based polyacrylic. I would usually use my big top, but I am almost out and there's no way I would have been able to do three coats with it. And yes, I do carry it, but I'm saving those bottles for you guys. Okay. So I am going to do three coats of the water-based polyacrylic. I don't know what was falling on top of this, but it looked like little white chalk paint specks. It was driving me nuts. Now you can sand in between coats. I don't do that and I always get a smooth finish. And then um, you do, again, like I said, dry in between coats. I did three, that was my preference. So I wouldn't have to worry if people were going to set things on top. And y'all, I put it back together and this is how she turned out. What should we name her? What is this name going to be? Because I need a name for her. So put your suggestions down in the comments. But I had so much fun with this. This was a great small piece and it really allowed me to play around with my different paint colors, my salt wash, and it really just inspired me and like made me happy. And I am so thankful that I found um, Krishanda's uh, channel and I can't wait to try more stuff. Look at all of that beautiful color and texture. This is so wonderful. And again, I know it's not everybody's style, but it's my style and it made me happy. It inspired me. And as you guys could see in the beginning, I did turn it into a little dog bed nightstand. So I'm crossing my fingers. Somebody else loves it as much as I do and buys it. Again, I hope you guys were inspired. Make sure to check uh, Krishanda's channel down in the um, description box and all products are available on my website, which is also in the description box. Bye you guys. I am back. 
and it's the same day. But you know what? I am out of breath. So I just did layering tops. I'm gonna keep the bottom top on and then just switch out the top top. A lot of tops. Okay. Here we go. Yeah, see, that looks like a new outfit. You guys don't know what I'm wearing on the bottom, right? Right? right. You guys, I have like pieces of furniture that are just sitting out of the room. We got that one. Oh, it's on cinematic, so it's not. It's a cool little like desk. I think it is so awesome, very retro. And then that old piece, which I've had in every house that we have lived in. So uh, those all need to be updated. So hopefully you're ready for that journey. All right, you guys, I hope you have a fabulous day. I appreciate you all for always being here with me. Have a good one. Bye.